It's the Sean Widmer Podcast. It's a journal by someone that just really doesn't like to write. New week podcast start today. I hope your weekend was good. If you're listening to this live, like when it happens, it's recorded on a Monday. We're in March, March Madness. I've got some some March Madness thoughts coming up here in just a few and why I'm I'm very depressed right now. We will dive into something happening here in Lexington that I'm loving right now. And a movie review, plus Kelly's What Are You Into? I appreciate some of my friends knowing me well, and we will get into something a couple people showed to me this weekend that I will, that I got deep, that I deep dove, really, really deep dove. I think we start though with the positive before I get into the negative. Happy birthday to my little brother, Travis. He would be late 20s. I think, are you 28 now, Trav? Happy birthday to Trav. Everyone needs to reach out to him if you know him on today, March 11th. Love him to death. I just, man, I, I talk to him almost more than I talk to anyone else in my life, and I just appreciate him. So happy birthday, Trav. I know I'll talk to you today on Marco Polo. Can't wait. We've got all sorts of stuff to catch up on, I'm sure, from the weekends. He and I are both working through Baldur's Gate 3, which is one of the greatest video games of all time. So I'm, I'm hoping that today... Travis, you know, my birthday present to you, tell Naomi, your wife, I've given you the night off from the kids. I mean, you have a birthday present coming, but also I'm throwing in there a a night away from the kids and you can just play Baldur's Gate all night. There you go. Happy birthday, buddy. Also, when when we're speaking of positive things, moving on from his birthday, the sun is out here in Lexington and thank goodness for that. It's been, the weather hasn't been terrible here. It's just been rainy, been very rainy. And it's, it's kept us indoors. And I don't mind being indoors with the kids. I've got, a, I've got plenty of tricks up the sleeves. You know, we've got enough games to play. I'm pretty decent at making a good obstacle course. Hide and seek is, is pretty cash money in our house right now. A lot of races, a lot of forts being built. We've got a pretty good, I, I've got a pretty good hold on the indoor activities, but it's nice to get outside. Oh my gosh, it's nice to get outside. So the sun has been out here, and it has opened up the world to us. And I, I want to give a shout out to two things that we've been doing that that are my kids are growing up moments. My daughter is now in love with her scooter, in love with it. And she likes her bike as well, but her cousins like their scooters. So she needs to like her scooter so she can be part of the scooter squad. And she wants to go out on a scooter all the time. What's great for me because I just grab my skateboard and I'll skateboard next to her and she goes on a scooter ride. I go on my skateboard ride and we just bomb around the neighborhood and it's the cutest thing in the world. And I'm proud of her because I think you get a couple different types of kids. You get the ones who are are very nervous and cautious and probably very smart about speed and they don't want to go super fast. They don't want to crash. My daughter didn't get that. My daughter wants the hills. She wants to pull the feet up on the scooter and let it rip. See, there you go, the bear. We're going to talk more about the bear here in a little bit. But she wants to let it fly. She wants to just go, go, go. And I love it. Now, has she crashed into the grass a couple times uncontrollably? Absolutely. But I love that she is enjoying it and and digging it. So it's nice the sun's out for that. But the other one that is great, the, what was it, Saturday, we went in the back and my kids are, are playing around and my daughter saw these little flower pots these little plastic flower pots that we had along the side of the house they're empty and she was like what are those and can I play with them I'm like of course so she starts filling them with rocks and then dumping them out and filling them with rocks and I thought okay well let's let's be a good dad let's take this up a level so I filled a bunch of them up with water so now she has access to water rocks and a big old thing of dirt a big old thing of the in one of the big planters a big heap of dirt in one of them and so she then proceeded for an hour and a half to make Huck and make me dirt soup. And it's the cutest thing in the world, the greatest thing in the world. you got to love your kids getting outside. Now, when this was all said and done, I looked at our little back concrete slab, our little patio in the back, the concrete slab on the, uh, by the basement door. And it was a little, a little terrifying. I mean, we had got dirt everywhere. For somebody who was making soup, in one little flower pot, why there was dirt on the walls, into the yard, on the chairs, on the stairs, why there was dirt everywhere, I don't quite know, and I didn't quite see it, but it was a real enjoyable time. We just got to, you know, come in afterwards, and you just hose hose the kids off, threw them in the shower, and just 
just got in there. We had to get in. There's dirt everywhere. My daughter's hair might never re- recover from Dirt Weekend. But we did that a couple days. Then it was nice. It's just nice to get outside. Shout out to the kiddos for wanting to be out there and just enjoying a nice dirt soup day. We'll have a lot of those, I think, this summer. Water, my daughter's a big water fan. My son, I think he wants to be a big water fan until he gets wet. And so as long as he is fully clothed in some kind of hazmat suit, he loves water. But the second some of that gets on his on his outfit, or on his shoes, soaks through to his feet, dude's done. Done. So we're 50-50. We're on our way there, though. We'll get there. Maybe. And who knows? Kid three. I'm hoping kid three, well, everyone hopes probably once you have two, your third kid is just the one that gets along with everything. There's no way that's possible, but the outdoors loving is something that I hope he gets. By the way, I apologize for my voice right now. I'm a little under the weather, so I am going to try to keep this a little bit short. Got a bit of a cold and a sore throat going. We're, we're hammering through that at the house. I think Huck had it last week, and now I've got the tail end of it. So I've uh, Huck and Olivia, I think, had it last week, and so I get it this week. It's great. Thank you for sharing, kids. We did, we they did, did blah, blah, blah. they did do something that drove me crazy yesterday, and I don't know how they do this. My daughter does this all the time. Every remote control in a house from the year 2024 on should have some kind of GPS tracking device on it. And that should just be built in. I think we've got that technology on lock enough that we can just throw it into about anything in the house, but the TV remotes should be built in with a, with a tracker. It gets on your phone, just like your Find My iPhone. If you have little AirPods, you know you can do the Find My AirPods, and, and that thing works really, really well. We lost the remote again this week, and I don't know how it happened. This is how quickly this stuff happens in a house of children. One second, I am on the couch. I have got my phone and the remote control right next to me. I get up to help my wife. We're getting ready for dinner. I grab my remote or I grab my TV. I leave the remote. I am in the kitchen for maybe 30 seconds, maybe grabbing some stuff for my wife. And when I came back to the couch, I have two kids there and no remote and no one is looking to fess up. So it's, it's now just gone and I have no idea what they did with it. And I have no idea where it could be. I ripped the couch apart. I went through every cupboard in the in the living room. I went under all the furniture that we have in there. I looked in the bathroom. I looked in all the cupboards in the kitchen. I have no idea where this thing has gone. I dug through the trash yesterday before I threw it out. I have no idea. But it took 30 seconds to a minute for these kids to take that remote and launch it somewhere, lodge it somewhere that I don't I have no idea where it is. And this has happened before and I'll find it in the weirdest place. One time it was in my daughter's closet in a bag of her toys. Uh, you just you never know where this thing is going to be. So we're on remote hunt. I just wanted to throw a shout out to the remote control companies. Put a GPS tracker on those LG, Samsung, Sony that I can just go to an app on my phone. Look, it's going to make me download your app. Make me download the LG app. And every time I open the LG app, bombard me with 3000 commercials for all your products. As long as there's a tab that allows me to find my remote, I will sift through all of your commercials for that feature. Get it done. I went and saw a movie this weekend, and and I, it was it was a, it was a fun time. I'm glad I saw it in theaters. I went and saw Dune two. Went and saw Dune two. I talked about my my adventures with Dune a couple weeks ago on the podcast, and I went and saw Dune two. I really liked it. I really liked it. I think it's a big screen movie. If you're into this world, I think it's a big screen movie. Big set pieces, huge set pieces, massive landscapes that need to be seen on the big screen. And the sound in it needed to be done in the big screen. Now, as for the movie itself, I personally really enjoyed it. But I am also not oblivious. I think this is going to be a movie that a lot of people do not like. It's almost three hours long. It's rather confusing if you didn't pay attention to the first Dune. If you didn't pay attention to all the family names, the lineages, the history of the characters, they don't really they don't really hold your hands through a lot of that stuff. And they make it so you can kind of piece it together. But if you don't know it, it's it's rather difficult to follow. I could see it being rather difficult to follow. And so for a long movie and you make it difficult to follow, that's tough. So I I, I really liked it personally, and I was very happy to see it. I will say I did not like how the story went throughout the movie. I don't want to spoil anything. 
I didn't like the ending. I don't want to spoil anything. I didn't like the ending. But they, but yeah, it's just <clears throat> you need to go into it with a, with a little bit of history as to what what happened in the first movie and even beyond beyond just what happened in the first movie. You need to kind of dive into the history of what's going on with Dune. You need to know the family names. You need to know who, what families have done what because it will help you understand the turmoil in the movie. Now, as for the people in the movie, I'm in on Timothy Chalamet. I mentioned it last week. I'm in. I thought he did a great job. I thought he was a great actor. He sold stuff very well. Scenes where he needed to be in pain, he looked like he was in pain. How actors do that, I don't know. How, how actors can get their faces to show me pain like pain I've never felt is crazy. But this is why they're great and why they get paid a lot of money and why they're actors and actresses. They're spectacular at it. When he was happy, he put off the good vibe for that. When things needed to be tense, he was there. When he needed to be a leader, it, it, I thought Timothy Chalamet did a great job. He was awesome. The guy who played the evil cousin, Austin Butler. I had only ever known that he was Elvis and a movie I never saw. Dude, he was rad. That dude was rad. He he crushed it. His character was terrifying, and he made that character terrifying. So props to him for that. I thought the acting in it overall was good. Now, I've had a lot of debates with my buddy Marcus on Zendaya. Zendaya. He is out on Zendaya. I'm, I'm on the fence. She's not, and I agree with him. In terms of her acting, it might not be all the way there. Like Marcus says, she has two faces the entire movie. That's it. For every scene, she's going to give you one of two looks. And I don't know if that's on purpose or if she's just not great at it. But when you're surrounded by these other actors and actresses who are crushing it with their mannerisms and their, their, their emotions, and that's being visible just on their appearance, and then yours is not as great as theirs, it's rather noticeable. So I don't think I'm out on her because I really liked her in Spider-Man. But I don't know that she was the best actress in this movie. Uh, Dune 2. I, again, I thought it was great. A really good sci-fi. I could see how, if you don't know much about it, you're going to hate it. So I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the reviews for it yet. I imagine it's getting very mixed reviews. I give it thumbs up. Apparently, I need to watch Oppenheimer this week. It won seven Academy Awards last night. Is that a record? I don't know. I didn't look at the news today. I just I, I was going to record the podcast. I'll be full disclosure. I was going to record the podcast Sunday night. Again, wasn't feeling great. And so I just went to bed. So I'm recording it early Monday morning, and I forgot to look to see if that was a record for Oppenheimer. But congratulations, you're going to get me to watch that movie. I guess also a very long movie like Dune. But now that it's on my TV, I could watch it in two or three sittings. Before we get into Kelly's What Are You Into? I need to take a deep breath before I do this because I'm depressed about this right now. I'm depressed about this. See Dune yesterday, liked it. And then I get right into Eastern Basketball. My favorite school, Eastern Washington University, loses in the Big Sky Tournament yesterday, 74-69 to Sac State. Eastern, the number one seed into the Big Sky Tournament, Sac State, the 10th seed. They had beat Idaho the day before. They're on a bit of a roll, I guess, right now. Whatever. And, okay, I need to bring, hang on. I need to get my texts. I had some PTSD last night. I had some PTSD last night because I'm bummed out. Eastern lost their game. And I love sports, and I love Eastern, and I was, I'm was i sad. I thought this was a really good team. I thought it was one of Eastern's best teams they've had ever. And I, I thought they were going to win Big Sky Tournament pretty easily and then maybe make a game out of their NCAA Tournament game. I was very excited about the prospects of this team. And they get they get out, ousted in the very first game. They will not be in the big dance, and that's it. So I'm sad last night. I'm, I'm actually sad. My wife was worried. I, got, I came home, and she was like, what's the matter? I go, Eastern just lost. And she was like, okay, well, cheer for UK. I'm, I'm, so I'm just sad. Then she realized that she's like, okay, I'm sorry. So I'm bummed. The very first text message I get, before any of my buddies text about the, how we're all bummed out, Andrew DeRosa, bad sports fan, sends this text message. The PTSD from working in sports radio sunk in immediately with all the bad sports fans who are just dumb. Here's the text. David Riley should be fired. Can't lose to a 10 seed and win back-to-back -back regular season titles and lose first round of Big Sky Tournament. 
So I send the three question marks because I thought I thought what a bad, what a really bad text. Let me send question marks to let you sort of redeem yourself. And his response, EWU lost to Sac State. Thank you. I, yeah, you know, I suddenly forgot about my favorite school. I suddenly, I suddenly forgot they existed. I had no clue. Come on, man. So I responded, I don't know that David Riley told Coward and Kaiman to suck the life out of the game. Because they had bad games. We'll get into that in a second. And then I said, you might not have watched. No response. It's just a classic bad sports fan. This is what I had to deal with every single day for multiple hours a day when doing sports radio. You just deal with people who are so dumb. DeRosa. What a dumb text. So David Riley wins back-to-back Big Sky championships with his team. They, they lose out in the Big Sky tournament back-to-back years. Does he deserve to be fired for that? Yeah. Yeah, he deserves to be fired. He deserves to be fired for winning. What did they go on that streak this during the Big Sky? Would they win eight or nine of ten or of eleven? Uh, let's let's you know what. Let's bring it up because I want to be I want to be accurate here with what that streak was because they were they were killers. They're absolute killers. They got in the Big Sky and they won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in a row. Then lost one. Then lost four in a row. Then lost back to back. Then lost four in a row to end the regular season. That's a pretty good run. Okay. And you're coaching at the Big Sky level. So you win the Big Sky regular season. I don't know what you want Eastern to have. Do you want them to come and hire Mark Few? That doesn't happen at the Big Sky. You get guys who win like this. This is what you're there for. Played good games at the beginning of the season. Lost the big games to the big schools. We're in a couple of them. And then you get things rolling and you crush it in the in the Big Sky. So... Why does he deserve to be fired? Let's look at what happened last night. So this is why he deserves to be fired. Jake Kyman, during the regular season, shot 40% from three, was one of seven last night. One of seven. He shoots near 40% Eastern wins. Cedric Coward, your Big Sky Player of the Year. Is that right? I might be wrong about that. I think he was. I might be wrong. Cedric, are you, who is a Big Sky I might be wrong about that. I think it's him. <clears throat> Let me make sure. Now I'm now I'm doubting myself because I'm in my own head. I'm trying to stay calm. I'm, try, I'm trying to stay calm, but I'm failing because I'm getting angry. Uh, he was not the Big Sky Player of the Year. He was first team. Dylan Jones from Weber State was Big Sky Player of the Year. There we go. It did sound right when I said it. Or it didn't sound right when I said it. But Cedric goes stale last night from three. Seven to 14 from the field. He had a couple buckets of the basket, but one of seven from three. Okay, so you got two guys who are scorers who are 2 of 14 from three. You shot 23% from the three-point line. I'm sorry. David Riley is not out there shooting the shots. He is getting you open looks. He's putting guys out there, calling plays that get guys open. Eastern does a good job offensively moving the ball. Guys are getting open looks. Shots aren't falling. And you want to fire David Riley because guys can't make shots? DeRosa does a sports podcast. It's got to be filled. I'm bad at sports takes. Ask Michael, ask Darnay. I, I need to go listen to just hear recently. I, I listened during football season, but football season's done. I got to know what he's doing during basketball season. I like his podcast during football. They do a lot of Seahawks. DeRosa, why? Why you got to do that to me? Why you got to? I'm just trying to come home and be sad and eat a big bowl of Captain Crunch and be depressed. And you got to rub salt in the wound by trying to fire a coach who's won back-to-back regular season titles, a coach who's probably going to be on the move sooner than later, a coach that can recruit guys to come play Eastern, you want to fire him? I was fired up. I was so sad, and then that's the first text I got, and I was so mad. A rough night for some guys. Well, you can't, I mean, Jake Kyman can't score three points total. Three points total in your Big Sky Tournament game. You're not going to win that game. I'm going to tell you what. If tonight, let me see. I'm trying to remember who goes tonight, who Sacramento State plays tonight. It is. Well, they play on Tuesday. But let's say, I mean, I, 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 I'm so mad I can't even see straight with this. But let's say they go up against Montana State. I think they're still in it. 
If they go up against Montana State and all of a sudden Robert Ford scores three points, Sacramento State's going to win. I'm going to tell you what. If if Robert Ford scores three points and Brandon Walker scores three points, which we had two of our good guys score three points, Montana State's probably not going to win that game, and their coach shouldn't be fired. Matt Logie shouldn't be fired for that. Okay, I got Kelly's What Are You Into? Shout out to John Dresback, and then a shout out a day later to Darnay. But John, you're going to get the credit for this. So I'm into the show The Bear. I've, I was talking about The Bear. In fact, I, I, we're going to get to the comments here in just a little bit. You can leave your comments on YouTube. You can leave your comments on Spotify on today's episode. You can leave your comments over at seanslife.com. Very easy way to do that, S-E-A-N. And a, a comment I had missed, the comment came out before I recorded Friday's episode, was from my friend Sarah. And Sarah said this, I started watching The Bear because of how much you raved about it last pod. I'm currently on episode four, and I have to be honest, I find it very slow. Not giving up yet, though. That was from Sarah. Sarah, I, I needed to reach out to you this week, and I didn't. I hope you watched more and liked it. I, there are some people who commented who did enjoy it, but that bummed me out that you didn't like it because Sarah and I are normally pretty similar in what we like for TV shows. Also, Sarah, get into Survivor this year. It's really good. But that bummed me out that, it, that she found it very slow. I thought, it, you know, I think it picks up a little bit and I thought it was really good. It's really tense. But she didn't, she might not, she might be out on it. Anyways, in the show, The Bear, there is a character who is really funny. on the, I think he's really funny on the show. He is their comic relief. When things get really tense, Neil Fack is his name on the show. We'll get into a scene, and he's the handyman, and he'll come in and he'll make some funny commentary, and he, and he, and he gets you kind of back out of the depressing parts of the show and, and fires you up and makes you laugh a little bit. So I find him to be really interesting. John texts me this last week and goes, you need to watch Maddie Matheson, who is the, the, character, the guy who plays the character Neil Fack. You need to watch his stuff on YouTube. I go, okay, Johnny, I'm in on this. I did not realize he is an actual chef. He's a real chef. He owns a bunch of restaurants. In fact, I then did some research on him, and he got incorporated with the show The Bear as a consultant. And I thought, I, I thought this was pretty cool with, with how the way TV world works. They brought him in so that all these actors and actresses who are making a show about, about a restaurant so that they know what a real restaurant's like. And he, he came in, and he would say things. He would go on to the set and be like, okay, look, in a, in a restaurant to this caliber, they would not have these kind of knives. They would have one knife. They would not have nice pots and pans. They would have one pot and pan. Uh, he went into there. He mentioned he went into their set for the... I think for one of the storage areas, and they had filled it with a bunch of food, right? Like you would think in a restaurant. He goes, no, no. If the restaurant is dying, they're, they're going week by week on ordering just enough food. They would have no excess supplies. So he came in as a consultant to make sure the restaurant looked realistic. He was telling you know the, 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 the cast, okay, you work at a crappy restaurant. You're not going to know how to move around the kitchen very well. Meanwhile, the main character... Cam Cameron, they she, that Cam, uh, or Carmen, excuse me. Carmen is gonna he he's a top 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 tier chef. He's gonna move around the kitchen differently than everyone else. And these are the kind of things Maddie Matheson came in to do. And then then they fell in love with him. And they're like, do you want to be on the show? And he didn't want to be a chef because he is a chef. So he played the handyman, and he's very funny. So John tipped me off to his YouTube channel, and I then spent three hours on Friday night laying in bed watching Maddie Matheson YouTube videos, which was really fun. And I re and he I really enjoyed him. Then Darnay, the next night, sent me a link to Maddie Matheson's TikTok. And so I spent a lot of time watching those. And the TikToks are a lot of his stuff off YouTube, but shortened down, they're really, really good. So I'm, I'm way in on Maddie Matheson. His cooking channel is, is very fun. It, he's got a lot of language in it, so don't just go there with your kids and expect to learn how to cook stuff without them also learning some, some words. But he's very funny. Maddie Matheson, I'm in on him. He also had a comment that I thought was really a good comment for someone like me who's doing this podcast and, and hope that it hopes that it, again, we're trying to grow it this year, but also hope that it connects with you. And he had said this because he was talking about being a chef. And one of the things he loves about being a chef, the quote was, everyone is trying to make stuff to make people feel something. 
I think that was a great quote. Because that's kind of what we're doing with this. I know that's what you're doing in the restaurants. He, he mentions in the restaurants how, as a chef, you might not be making a ton of money, but that's not what you're in it for. You're in it to make someone feel something. You want them to leave your restaurant feeling happy, feeling inspired to maybe go try something. And with the podcast, I'm, uh, you know, I, I do it, we do three a week, and they're to make you feel something, right? Hopefully to make you feel happy, hopefully to make you laugh, hopefully to make you feel, uh, you know, we talked about relatability. Hopefully if you're a parent and you listen and you hear some of the kids' stories and maybe my kids' stories go haywire, maybe it makes you feel like, you know what, maybe my weekend wasn't as bad. That stuff. You know, hey, I've got a bunch of dirt i got to clean up in the house today because I let my daughter walk through our basement covered with dirt soup. Dirt, dirt soup. So there you go. they got to do that. Okay, there's your Kelly's What Are You Into? Maddie Matheson. Love him. Come on the podcast, Maddie. Come on the podcast. Let's get into comments, shall we? We do this at the end of every episode. We read the comments from the last week's, our last episode. We've got one off YouTube here. It is from Roberta. And we had talked about watching airplanes on Friday. She said, I spent many a year watching airplanes. Lived right off runway one to five in Anchorage. Still will stop to this day to watch an air when an airplane flies over. I would I would much rather watch the planes than ride in them unless I was flying them. Motion sickness here. Oh, Roberta, that's brutal. Growing up in airplanes with a father who is a private pilot brings up lots of memories. And yes, I will always watch airplanes. Oh, really? A, a private pilot. One of the coolest jobs in the world. Private pilot, top-notch job. One of those exclusive, cool and when you're a kid, it sounds cool. When you're an adult, it sounds cool. Private pilot's cool. And yeah, Roberta, I'm in. I'm in on the watching airplanes thing. I think it's going to be a regular occurrence this summer for the Widmer family. Nice way to get out of the house. Fun to take dinner on the road. I loved it. Let's go over to Spotify, where Yvonne said, I'm going to start binge-watching The Bear this weekend. We'll comment on Monday. Her bands that she was into when she was in her 20s. Here we go. The Bangles, Kiss, Journey, Sawyer Brown, Styx, and Van Halen. Man, I remember for the longest time I knew nothing about sticks except for Mr. Roboto. I don't know why we knew Mr. Roboto. Kelly Custer showed it to me. And so I knew nothing about sticks except for that they sang Domo Arigato, Mr. Roboto. That's all I knew. Uh, you know, I think I've covered it. Journey, I love their music, but it has been ruined by karaoke. I do not like when someone tries to sing karaoke Journey songs. I don't know why. I just, whoo. It bothers me. The Bangles. <coughs> the Bangles sing something that I love. They sing, let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Oh, they sing Manic Monday. That's the Bangles song that I know. All right, I love the list, Yvonne. We're going to get more lists here in a second. From Ron on Sean'sLife.com where he commented, he said, in my mid-40s, oh, I'm in my mid-40s, and most of the bands I listened to then, in his 20s, I still love. Here's his list. No FX. Face to Face, Alkaline Trio, The Vandals, The Ataris, Pennywise, Sunny Day Real Estate, Bad Religion, MXPX, I could go on and on. Okay, so of those, Ron, I love The Ataris and I love MXPX. I do not know much about NoFX except for that I've seen their music around a lot. I've never heard of Sunny Day Real Estate. I might know a Pennywise song. I don't love Bad Religion. I've never heard of Alkaline Trio. You've given me some music to go look into, Ron. I appreciate it. And Ian said this. So 2000 Punk is so good. One of, um, Excuse me. So 2000 Punk is so good. One of my most listened to genres. Love that, Ian. As far as punk goes, 2000s is great to, great listening, but lost its meaning to what punk truly is. Okay, so that's the, that's the thing. I'm not a punk fan. I'm a pop punk fan. It's different, right? You get the punk fans who are like the Ramones and stuff. Uh, but that's not my deal. I'm a pop punk fan. So that's that's where my world is, pop punk. Uh, and he says, top five for me are, here we go. But apparently there's one of these bands I need to check out. Number one, Blink-182. Number two, AFI. I think Jeremy, my buddy Jeremy, deep dove AFI this last week. AFI's rad. Did they sing Miss Murder? Let me see. AFI songs. I think they sing Miss Murder. Yeah, Miss Murder. Miss Murder's great. I'm trying to see what other songs I would know of theirs. I know I know some AFI songs. They're good. I enjoy them. They're a little more rocky, which I appreciate. Number three for Ian, Pennywise. Again, Ron and Ian both mentioned him. Pennywise, a band I don't know. Need to check him out. Number four, Sum 41. Love them. Number five, The Offspring. Outside looking in, Paramore. 
of all of the list, Pennywise and the Offspring are pl- are closest to punk roots. All right, I'll have to check out Pennywise. I I want to love original punk music. It's just for some reason not all the way. It doesn't all the way connect with me. Regular old old school punk music, original punk. I've tried it. I want to like it. Some songs I like, but if you throw me an old punk band, more likely than not, I will not love all their songs. You throw me a pop punk band, I'm going to like the whole album. All right, thanks for listening today. I appreciate it. (coughs) Man, I got to get over the sickness. This cough now is from the new sickness. We have two kids, little kids. I believe I'll be sick forever. And then we've got a baby on the way. So when he gets here, that's going to be even more. I might be sick for the next four or five years. I'm excited about that. Have a good day.